Shot one. Shown to be wild, it's Sean Walsh. And their team captain, John Richardson. And facing them tonight, the only way is Essex, it's Amy Childs. Northern Rock, it's Sarah Milliken. And their team captain, Sean Locke. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, a new report claims 99% of fish could be wiped out in a mass extinction? On the plus side, that will make it much easier to find Nemo. <laughs> Incredibly, a quarter of the human brain is used just to control the eyes. Don't look at the cleavage, don't look at the cleavage, don't look at the cleavage, don't look at the cleavage. <laughs> wow, what a cleavage. <laughs> And you're back in the room. <laughs> and in the UK, 61% of adults are now clinically obese. The problem is so bad that the minimum requirement to get on embarrassing bodies now is 25 stone, two fannies and hairy teeth. <laughs> you would make it. <laughs> right, let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. John's team, you ought to go first. What do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Well, one of the things that's affecting my world is all the sadness of all the high street shops closing. So, I think that's probably one of the things. So, Habitat going and Thornton's going and Jane Norman and all these shops and it's... Uh, very depressing, it's sad. And I used to work at Habitat. You used to work at Habitat? I used to sell sofas at Habitat. Did you? Not very well, clearly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's gone downhill because I left. Ah. So, all these shops are closing down and it's very sad, other than the bitch that used to be my manager at Habitat has now been sacked. Yes! <laughs> Look at me now, bollocks. <laughs> Sorry? What if she's fat? And then you said, oh, look at me now. You should need to go and help her. <laughs> I think I'm a stylist, not a magician. <laughs> she was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, you're done. <laughs> you come on eight out of ten cats just to slam an unemployed pensioner. <laughs> Good on you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, by the way, if you're watching... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill your cats. <laughs> What are you doing? What is it? What? Oh, like, Stop. haters. Three clicks. Can you do that one? <laughs> 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 you, look, you look a little bit special at the best of times. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the high street. Hello. So the other ones have gone out of business. So Thornton's have gone out of business. Habitat have, have gone, as we said. Comet have gone. Carpet Right have gone. So Carpet Right are actually going to have a closing down sale, because they've... They've cried wolf <laughs> quite a few times with the we're having a sale, no, really, this is a good sale. But this time, they mean it. Carpet writes one of those things. You, you, you just can't sell carpet, cos so, well, your brain just can't cope with seeing carpet, like, on the wall and in a book. <laughs> they should have carpet shoes, shouldn't they? So it's like a shoe. Put your foot into a piece of carpet and it fits like a shoe. <laughs> then you walk around. <laughs> and you look down and you go, that's what it would look like, wouldn't it? <laughs> what, what, what do you think about that I idea, think, carpet, I think if... right? Is it too late? <laughs> <laughs> Rebranding is the way to go. Like, mother care's another one that's in trouble. And you've just got to get another market in there. So you put, like, a, a tap of beer in there and you just call it, like, Milf Saros. <laughs> Do you do much shopping on the high street? Well, I don't um, shop in Fulton's because I don't eat chocolate. So... <laughs> so, it doesn't matter, that's right, gone. Yeah. Don't matter. Well, it's 140 shops and uh, 20,000 jobs, but, uh, yeah, don't worry about that. Didn't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think really that one matters as much because you're not affected. No, I used to love Jane Norman. I can't believe that's closing down. Jane Norman, I couldn't get me tits in those clothes, so I'm quite glad it's shutting. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a high street shop, haven't you, Amy? My friend does. It, but she's on the show, The Only Way is Essex. The Only she, Way is Essex? Yeah. I wanted to mention that, actually. It's not the only way. There's a better way. <laughs> <laughs> but you own 
own Italian salon, don't you? I do vajazzles. Basically, for the show, for the show, I do vajazzles, and they come in and tell me all their life stories. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you come Is down? Why don't you have a vagina? Why don't I come down? Because no, I don't have a vagina. <laughs> Is it called a pajazzle when a boy has it? This is when you put the. Oh, well, surely you should call it glitter balls. <laughs> As well. I don't, a, I don't do that. What's a vajazzle? Is they take a, a twinkle cave. Twinkle cave. <laughs> And they decorate around the top of the Twinkle Cave with a few little shiny things. Sean, it's delightful. And no. it's called the Jazzle. What? No, I don't understand. They decorate it. Yeah. Yes, they do. They sm Why? You know, because sometimes when you look at one, you go, oh, it's a bit dull, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, you see what you can do? You, you can do them at home. I'm sure yours are much better, but you can do it at home where you just put a bit of, like, Pritt stick on. <laughs> On, but you always have to do it over like a bit of newspaper so you can get <laughs> it back into the thing because it's expensive. Could you do it with like, could you use dried pasta and stuff and lentils? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen any? Have you ever seen, because you're on the only way as Essex, have you ever seen Geordie Short? I've not watched it yet. Have you not seen it? No, you know I've not Sarah's like it. the big star on it. She's like <laughs> <laughs> she's sort of like the equivalent of you. I probably have not watched it yet. It's horrific, don't watch it. Imagine if someone from Essex and someone from Newcastle mated. <laughs> Make a scouser. Yeah. Let's <laughs> 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 oh. have a look and see what the high school is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, this is the news that several high street stores face closure. Clinton Cards is in trouble, so I popped into Hallmark to get them a sorry your closing card. <laughs> What else do you think is in our top three? Glastonbury. G Glastonbury? Yeah. Right, what Beyonce. have they been saying? Beyonce at Glastonbury. It was all Be over Twitter. What did you see it? Did you like it? No, I didn't go. You didn't go? But everyone was talking about it. It was all over Twitter, everything. Have you ever been to a festival? I've been to V Festival. Was, yeah, was it good? I, I was supposed to camp for three days, but I lasted a night. So I didn't go to Glastonbury. I no. dream of lasting a night. <laughs> Sure, we're talking about the same thing. Have you ever been to Glastonbury, Sean? Yeah, I stopped going though because I did the maths one year, and mathematically, <laughs> Glastonbury doesn't make sense. Because <laughs> there's, uh, there's 137,000 people, and I think there's 3,200 toilets, which means it's 42 people per toilet. Doesn't sound that bad, but if you think if you had 42 people staying at your house, one toilet. <laughs> and they're all vegetarians. <laughs> and you're number 38. <laughs> Basically, the Glastonbury is the Somme with Biffy Clyro playing, isn't it? Doc, <laughs> 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 so, did you go to Glastonbury? Did you watch any of Glastonbury? No, do you know why? The whole festival thing. I mean, well, number one, I don't like nature. Full stop. I like concrete. <laughs> I like shops. But I went to one festival once, and actually, I think it was V Festival as well, and I think I lasted about two hours and then just had to go. I couldn't bear it. I, it was dirty, it was sweaty, everyone stunk, there was no shops, I couldn't use my credit card, couldn't use my hairdryer. It was awful, hated everything. You brought a hairdryer? I took my hairdryer, hoping to plug it in somewhere. Yeah. But I hated it and just left. Isn't it a farm the rest of the year? So is there, like, some kind of exchange programme, so if your friend you know, goes to Glastonbury, you have to have a cow at their house. Is that how... <laughs> <laughs> what happens to the animals the rest of the time? What happens to the animals? They go on holiday. Oh. <laughs> Do they? Yeah, to a big sort of shed thing with loads of spinning knives. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Rooney went, didn't he, with Colleen? Yeah. Where they went. Do you think he knew he was there? Yeah, I don't think he's ever seen a tent before. <laughs> he probably thought they're called shell suit houses. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met Wayne? No. Do you like him? I don't watch football. I'm a big fan of Colleen, though. I think she's brilliant. Yeah, she is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, that's unquestionable. That yeah. is. Let's just park that as a fact. She is brilliant. The way, the way she manages to walk about and spend money. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you watch any of that? Uh, I watched a 
watched a bit of Beyonce, I was more alarmed that it looked like she'd forgotten her skirt. Um, <laughs> it did just look like she had big pants on and then she'd gone out. Like, like you know, when you go to school and you forget your PA kit. She said, I'd do it in her pants instead. Do you think she turned up a glass of and had to do it in her pants? Because yeah. she'd forgotten her kit. <laughs> That's what I think happened. Jay-Z went, well, you're doing it in your kit, we're not going back. <laughs> I went to Fee Vessel and I dressed up so much. I had high heels, well, no, I had cowboy boots on. I had like really nice shorts on, but I really dressed up like full face of makeup. Everyone was in like wellies and everything. Had you come as a half peeled banana? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you it's not one of the most talked about stories this week. I love Beyonce, a breakout artist. I love the way she's fused hip-hop and R&B with a sassy self-assurance that's empowering and self-confident. I love her sense of style and the way she's constantly reinventing her image. I love her music, her lyrics, dedication and single-mindedness. But most of all, I love her ass. <laughs> uh, Dolphin, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it yesterday's strike action? So all the, the uh, teachers are on strike. And they didn't know what to do, which seems... Because when the firemen go on strike, they get the army in. You just do that in schools. Teachers come <laughs> Send the army into schools. Well, just hose down the kids. Sorry, there's been a terrible mix-up. <laughs> they certainly sort out the discipline, and they, I imagine they would learn stuff. Two plus two is four. Sir, yes, sir! <laughs> the crap out of them. How was your day, Oliver? You don't know, cos you weren't there, man! <laughs> What would you for him? Well, I went to private school, so I never did go... Like, my teacher never went on strike, so... You I went to private school? Yeah. Well, that wasn't a waste of money. <laughs> <laughs> when, you say, when you say private school, were you, were you a boarder? Because I think I've seen this DVD. <laughs> Very funny. Do you know what, though? And I got head girl as well. I was head girl. You were head girl? Head girl. <laughs> this is the same... <laughs> It's not just, not just teachers, it's uh, passport control officers as well. They, they want to go on strike. With the team, what, what, what they should do is let them go on strike and get the baggage handlers in to do it for them. So you could give them the baggage handlers your passport and they go, yeah. Is that your laptop? So this is the strike. So when 750,000 people went on strike, teachers, civil servants and public sector workers. And the people who answer 999 calls. We should have checked that couldn't happen, shouldn't we? You can't be phoning up and they've just got someone in. She's like, hey, yeah, what do you want? Ambulance. Brenda, what number for an ambulance is it? <laughs> Two. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> I used to take 999 calls. I used to work for BT. But you, you got, no offence here, but you're what I would describe as a, a, a chatty Cathy. Chatty <laughs> what? Chatty Cathy. You, Are you you're quite a, No, you're quite a chatty man. <laughs> so when someone phones up and goes, please fire ambulance, I imagine you would go, what's happened? <laughs> Tell me everything. Yeah. <laughs> He's done what? No. I'll send him round. <laughs> yeah, no, the firemen are busy. They're coming round here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the strikes are up there. Yes, of course. Yes, 750,000 teachers, civil servants and public sector workers didn't go to work yesterday in the largest day of strike action since the 1980s. I feel a bit bad. I've got a friend who's a part-time teacher. Well, they're all part-time. <laughs> Shawstein, what else do you think the nation will be talking about this week? Um, Wimbledon. Oh, yeah. Wimbledon? Yeah. yeah. Go on, what, were you excited by it? Do you like it? Not really. Um, <laughs> um, I like that when people watch Wimbledon, they all go out and play tennis, don't they? You know, so it's like when I watch a cookery programme, it makes me want to eat. You know? <laughs> it's like if I watch a sad programme, it makes me want to eat. <laughs> Programs about weddings and that. Just eat. <laughs> Fridge is quite close to the telly, isn't it? <laughs> close enough, unfortunately. <laughs> but I've got one of those grabby things that pensioners have, so it's chucky. <laughs> uh, what, what do you make of Wimbledon? Do you like Wimbledon? Don't really watch it. But I've got to tell you, I'm actually a professional table tennis player. <laughs> I'm actually number. Oh, I was number two in. How SC. do you serve? Because I think I've seen this in Thailand. <laughs> So what level are you at table tennis? 
I'm professional, I'm really good. What, you're a professional? Yeah. Who pays you to play and what do you wear <laughs> when playing? Well, I paid when I was about 13 to 16. That's when like, I didn't discover boys or makeup or, you know, the sugar hut. But the, I was really good. The sugar hut? Is yeah. That a euphemism or? <laughs> <laughs> It's a nightclub, I can't believe you've not been Sugar Heart. I thought it was a sweet shop when I got quite excited. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think of Woman's Do you like it, Gog? Do you know what? I don't really watch I, mean, I kind of do watch it. It's one of those sports that, I, I, if it's on, I'll watch a little bit, but I don't really follow it unless it's uh, raining and the boys are wearing very small white shorts. <laughs> uh, Cut. He goes very sick. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Lopez is fit, you get it. So. <laughs> Good to know, if you're watching Lopez. <laughs> this, is, this is like hearing what Sue Barker wants to say. <laughs> <laughs> How many years are we going to have a roof before it's not exciting? Whereas it just it literally is... Is the roof on? Yeah. What I don't understand is, why can't they play tennis in the rain? Just get on with it. The ball's wet, they slip around, it's funnier. <laughs> <laughs> why can't they play in the rain? So like You cricket. can play in a bit of light rain, it's fine. Yeah, but then why can't they play in heavy rain? Why do they just play on if it's pissing down? Ah, it's all... <laughs> <laughs> just play the bloody game, get on with it. You can make racket umbrellas. That's what they do, so you can... <laughs> 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 uh, well, let's have a look and see whether Wimbledon is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, indeed, the most talked about thing this week. Us British, we're not great at tennis, so holding the best tennis competition in the world here in Britain is ridiculous. It's like, I don't know, hosting the World Cup in Qatar. <laughs> At the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Sarah and Amy have one point. John, Gok and Sean have two points. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. Our next round is pick of the polls. OK, Sean Steen, what do you like the look of? Uh, keyboard. We like the look of the keyboard, Jimmy. You like the look of the keyboard? There's a consensus okay. amongst me and the girls. <laughs> <laughs> in a poll to find out who people would turn to for advice, Google, the internet search engine, came second. What came first? Um, don't know. It's not written there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really had any great advice. I mean, a couple of good bits of advice from my dad. He said, never drink in a pub with a flat roof. <laughs> good advice. You think about it. They're usually on the edges of council estates. <laughs> <laughs> no offence, Amy. <laughs> You're more likely to get punched in a pub with a flat roof, aren't you? There's a higher chance of you getting hit. There's a pretty good chance of me being hit in any given pub. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you walk in like that, and my father warned me against this, but <laughs> I shall have a Cinzano and lemonade and give you a chance. <laughs> who, who do you go to for advice? When something bad happens, when, when something happens in your life, there's a crisis, who do you go to? My mum. And what does she say? Google it. <laughs> I think it's got to be family, because I, I would definitely go to Mama and Papa Wan every single time for advice. Mama and Papa? Mama and Papa Wan. Oh, that sounds adorable. I think, yeah, they are adorable. Do you phone them up for just advice on, on like, personal stuff, or is well, it like... Is I, it I, tend, I tend to talk to Mama Wan first, because I can't understand my dad, because he talks in very broken English still, which is... Uh, a little bit racist, Gok. A little bit racist. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a little bit... But it's true, but honestly, to this day... Have you never communicated with your dad? We do. My dad, my dad is one of these immigrants that so came over to the country. We... we... <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. I've got social immunity, I'm allowed to say this. He's one of these immigrants that came over, and we came over, he couldn't speak English, and my mum taught him to speak English because they fell in love, and then over his, his life, he's lived here since he was 16, he's about 102 now, so he's been here most of his life, and so he must be able to talk good English. But he's really, as soon as he doesn't want to listen to a word we're saying, we'll say, you know, Dad, how are you? We'll just go, oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn around to my dad and I'll say, that, you know, Dad, this has happened in my life, or, you know, this has happened, I really need some advice, and he'll go, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is, and this is the honest truth. He becomes really racist about himself and refuses to talk in English. And you've got comedians go. watching you on going, you know we can't possibly join in on it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. Does he sometimes say this? <laughs> He's amazing. I love my dad. So you would go to your parents for advice? I always go to my parents for advice. Yeah, I'm going to give it to you, because the answer is the person a Brit's turned to most for advice is a parent. Well done. Well done. <laughs> so 
young people are more likely to go to a parent for advice than ask Google. I'm not sure how comfortable I'd be with shouting, Mum, Mum, have you got any topless shots of Megan Fox? <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your question. Top thing that makes someone posh. <laughs> how they speak. How they speak. You think that's what makes someone posh? 100%. I think, I think it's more that you can always, nearly, with a real posh person, you can always see their teeth. <laughs> I think a really, a really posh person looks like a normal person halfway through a sneeze, like... <gasps> posh people always have uh, their pasta kept in, like, see-through jars. They want to show you their pasta. They go, look, look, look spaghetti, look. <laughs> Look at shit. What have you done? You've taken it out of the packet and put it in another packet. You're wasting your time. <laughs> like it's a special treasure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sarah, what do, you, what do you genuinely, what do you think makes someone posh? Um, men wear coloured trousers. <laughs> What's that about? Yeah, not just like beige or black or jeans. That's... Like the, red. The, yeah, green. Yeah. Green. Yeah, Who's yeah, wearing yeah, green trousers? trousers? <laughs> and also, posh people, they don't know how to put on a jumper, do they? <laughs> They get a jumper and they go, oh, bloody... Oh, I'll just put it over my shoulder. <laughs> posh people say they don't do their hair, do they, really? Po I noticed that. Posh people don't do their hair? No, not really. It's all messy and, like, skew-whiff, isn't it? What about like Lord Walsh oh, over there? <laughs> <laughs> Order! <laughs> The question is, top thing that makes someone posh? A swimming pool's bigger than their jean pool. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's the poshest person you've met? Who's the, who's the poshest? You. <laughs> I'm not that posh. I, I come across, I think, as, as a little bit posh, but I'm not. That's posh. <laughs> I'm not actually that posh. I... <laughs> I'm just a fucking slough. I can't be that posh. I've just got very good diction. I'd stab you as soon as fucking look at you. <laughs> OK, so top thing that makes someone posh, it's to do with your childhood. Public school. That's the right answer. <laughs> yes, the top thing that makes someone posh is going to private school. I went to a fairly posh single-sex school, but I never really fitted in. I guess partly it's because I'm male and partly because I was 37 when they found me. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are Sean, Sarah and Amy have two points. John Gock and Sean have three points, which means John's team are tonight's winners. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. If you want more, tune in to 8 out of 10 Cats Uncut on Wednesday. That's it from us. Good night. watching you know what would be great is if you liked and subscribed i'm so needy i'm so sorry uh, and why not come and see me live and uh, the tickets are available at sarahmillican.co.uk put the kettle on and settle in